Okay, so I believe we are live. Uh, let me know if you can hear me. Just want to make sure. And then we'll see who we have in here. I'm going to write down in the chat why if you can hear me. So I'm doing a bit of an experiment this time. Um, what I'm going to do, and we're going to let some uh, people get in. Yes, perfect, Mark. Thank you for letting me know. Thank you, Judy's Art Adventures. Thank you, James L. Baker. Hey, from London. Hey, James, how are you? Uh, Leslie Kuhn. Okay, we're going to go over the chat in just a moment. So basically what I'm doing, you may notice there's a bit of a change in the quality of the video. So I'm trying out uh, 720p instead of 1080 because the last time I felt like the playback, I'm just taping my reference to the wall. I felt like the playback was a little choppy. I don't want this to happen this time. Um, so I'm trying to stream at a bit of a lower quality because my camera isn't that great anyway. My webcam, my this potato. <laughs> so I don't have actually need that good of a quality. So I'm fine with that. I'm a bit tired today, a bit cranky. Uh, you'll have to bear with me, I think. Uh, let's see what we have uh, in the chat. So I'll use my trusty iPad and we'll go over everything from the beginning. Hey, Simak, hello from Ontario, Canada. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, Beverly Ozarak, hello. How are you? Jody's Art Adventures, Leslie, Mark, thank you so much. I hope you're doing well. Um, YM, perfect, perfect. So everyone can hear me. Uh, just let me know uh, if you're here, where you're from, what time it, it is, uh, and what you're doing. Uh, we have Asude Aksa from uh, Turkey. We have uh, Terry. We have Chris P. Uh, let me tell you a bit about what we're going to do now. Uh, so today is day 15 of the Washtober Challenge. And what we're going to do is actually paint, uh, again, this today's prompt, which is mailbox. Uh, now I've set up everything pretty quickly so hopefully everything works well so I have this uh, basically this is a drawing of a mailbox and uh, we're just gonna paint it it's a fairly simple painting it's gonna be relatively quick okay which is uh, I think good I think it's gonna be good um, and if you have any questions you let me know now uh, just leave a comment in the chat um, and I'll be happy to address them uh, and we have a cameo today Ruth so say hi <laughs> She always runs away whenever I live stream. What? You want to stay with us? She doesn't. I'll get her later again. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> She's so cute. Uh, but unfortunately, she doesn't like it when I live stream. And I told you about it. It's so funny. So, um, whenever I film, like the YouTube videos, the normal YouTube videos, she just comes over here and she sits on the on the studio sofa. I don't know why the live streams, uh, she doesn't like them as much. I should get some treats and maybe bribe her with them. Um, so yes, uh, Alyssa Rosengard, yes, she's, she is really, really cute. She's really cute. We love her. Um, we're really pathetic in that way. Um, all our lives are revolving around her, basically. So uh, let me go back to this. This is today's painting. Um, let's talk a bit about, let's see how many people we have here. So we have 50. Wow, nice. The numbers really jump fast. So 50 people. So I'm going to tell you a bit about my plan for this one. And um, I'm going to drop a link to the reference photo uh, in, the, in the chat because I forgot to add one in the description. So here we go. Maybe I can edit it now. I don't know. No, I don't think so. So I'll just rub it in the chat. So this is uh, the reference. If you want to take a look, uh, I'm going to show it to you here. It's printed. Not that good of a quality, but here we go. It's basically a mailbox. And what I want to do here, um, there are quite a lot of interesting things to explore um, when it comes to this kind of a painting. One of the things um, I think I get asked about the most is greens, how to handle greens and watercolor and how a lot of people experience um, their greens being a little boring or repetitive or just look maybe unprofessional. So we're going to figure that out today. Now, if you look at this uh, reference photo, 
you have a lot of different types of green and um, it's, it really contrasts well with the red for the mailbox by the way so that's something we'll uh, definitely take into consideration when we're working on this you know the red and the and only now notice it says Naminara Republic I have no idea where it is but um, yeah so we're gonna focus on again the colors green red they contrast quite strongly uh, but the most important thing, in my opinion, is the variation in the greens. Um, and that's something really important to get. So if you look here, we have a bit of a bluish, kind of dark green. Then the more we move here, you see hints of yellow within the green. It's pretty much light here, a little dark in the background. My goal is to get this entire thing on the first wash. Okay, so this is going to be part of our focus in, in this one. I think the plan for the first wash is going to be paint over everything but this section here that's a little um, lighter than the background and then we're going to add some interesting details so let me put this here and I actually want to check one more thing with the reference photo that I'm not so sure about so sometimes what I do is uh, I turn the, the photos black and white just to see uh, what they look like in black and white and sure enough okay yeah so the this part and here Ruth came back <laughs> this part uh, is pretty much similar value uh, and I know it may be a little strange but look at this let me show you I'm gonna point um, you see this here and this it's pretty much the same value which is kind of unbelievable because these the hues the colors are so different but it's actually similar value now this is lighter than this this is lighter than this this here is darker than the background I believe let me make sure that again sometimes you have to use like photo editing softwares just to see what things look like um, let's see here yeah it's much darker good so we're good we have a good grasp on what's going on uh, so let's see who we have here in the chat we have 64 people it seems on my end uh, and we can finally get to uh, painting so let's go over some of the comments real fast then get to the process um, so, to, let's see, uh, uh, YM says hi Ruth, Ruth say hi back, uh, Barbara Gemin Heileron from Italy, nice to see you, 3 o'clock here, taking a break and making a uh, student's test, oh I see, making or checking, or maybe preparing a test, Mark sends a heart from Ohio, thank you so much, uh, Terry Heim from Lake Orion, Michigan, USA, uh, Lola NP it makes me happy to see Ruth. Uh, she's happy to see you uh, too, believe it or not, uh, even though she's there in the corner. Uh, John's watercolor is great to see Ruth and May. Thank you so much, John. Nancy G. Hi, Ruth uh, from Akron City. Uh, I was really close to Akron a couple of times. Uh, Mark, hey Nancy. So, oh, oh, Sylvania, Ohio, Toledo. Cool, Toledo. I have not visited. Um, Ruth, my calendar today says share pictures of cute puppies. Oh, that's funny. So do that. I uh, love your instructions. Look forward to learning much from you. Marjorie Johnson, hey, how are you? Changed the mailbox for a birdhouse. You have my backyard. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, I love birdhouses. I should paint a birdhouse probably. Mailboxes in Germany are extremely boring, unfortunately, so I'm happy about your reference photo. They're incredibly boring here as well. Uh, Ucha Murmur, hello, uh, Pramod Jangam, hi, Pramod Jangam from India, Marjorie Johnson, I would love to see the uh, black and white, um, yeah, I will upload it, you'll see it later, <laughs> I, I think, I don't have it prepared, unfortunately, I will for the next time, or maybe I can print it as we speak, um, Annette Fournier, hi from Pennsylvania, Kubra, hi from Turkey, same time zone, uh, hi Liron from Skapoos, I remember Skapoos, uh, Joanne Langfeld, hi Liron, I'm here from Sonom Count County, California, oh good wines, uh, and I love your helpful videos, you're such a great instructor, thank you so so much, much appreciated, um, I think I'm going to print the photo and then we'll jump uh, into the process, let's see, file print, and again, I may be a bit slow today, so <laughs> we'll have to bear with me, uh, I'm going to print it black and white, now our printer loves to print stuff green, even when they're, uh, I'm asking for black and white, so you'll see it kind of greenish, monochromatic green. Um, uh, John asks, Liron, did you recently have an article in Leisure Painter magazine? Uh, which month is it? Uh, I'm going to check and tell you the month. I did have one, and I posted uh, part of it on Instagram, so I hope to share it 
properly soon. Um, I did, and I, I'm very happy with it. There's going to be one for next month as well. I believe it's the October magazine. So October and November should probably have one as well. So for the plan, I'm going to take a brush that's kind of uh, medium to large size. You know what? I could even, you know, let's stay with this one. Um, and I'm going to paint a first wash that covers everything but this part. Now, why do I leave this part out? Um, does it print? Yeah. Why do I leave this part out? Just because it's much lighter, so we're going to have an easier time if we first kind of set the tone for everything else. Honestly, it can be quite random. Sometimes I choose to leave one part white for the moment. I will turn it red later on. The thing is, so you have two options here. You have endless options, but one of the options I would consider is maybe covering everything up and putting a bit of red for this section. Now, the problem with that uh, is that the green from the background is going to bleed right into this red. And I don't want that. So we'll probably just leave it as is. So let me just mix a bit of just green here, sap green. Now the green up top is fairly dark. So we're going to have to um, mix it to be that kind of similarly dark, let's say. I'm going to get started. We'll see what we get. Remember, a lot of it is putting something down, seeing what it looks like. Um, and figuring out what uh, what needs changing. Now, one more thing I want you to have in mind, this is the Washtober challenge. Uh, a big part of it to me is just to make sure that you paint every single day without being too big of a perfectionistic um, around what you paint, how good the result is. Um, as long as you create every single day, I think you, you won. Okay, that's the, the key element here, I think, especially for anything that's done on a... Uh, daily basis, you have to really allow yourself that uh, freedom in a way not to create anything too perfect, you know. So now that I have most of the upper part, it's time to really take our time and darken. So I'm going to darken because this section I would uh, ideally not touch or deal with too much later. And I'm actually going to mix in some black just because it's quick. Uh, you know, people, um, I always say I don't use as much, but from time to time, it is okay. So, don't let your um, don't let your opinions get in the way of being efficient. Let's say, even if I don't always like green, I will use it occasionally. Okay. Now, notice how we got a bit of brown here from the sepia and the burnt sienna. That's already creating some interest in our greens. Now, as we move down, it's important not to create a harsh uh, harsh transition here, especially. Okay. Uh, and by the way, let me know that you can see everything well, if you can hear everything well, and if at any point you don't, uh, I want to know, so thank you for that. Um, and now I'm going to switch to a bit of yellow. Now it is important to keep things fairly light at this area, but notice how I'm not going in any spot am I going with a pure color. It's always a mix of multiple colors. And that's what gives, I think, the greens their interest. Again, this is a problem a lot of people face, their greens feel maybe boring to them, not necessarily to other people, by the way, but uh, I have heard from many people that experience this, and this is the remedy. You just have to vary them a lot. Um, now I'm going to try and get some cleaner yellow. Now, this part in the shadow, I do want to cover um, just to get a, a more even wash. So we're going to do that. I'm going to add a bit of red to the mix. And because it's in the shadow, I don't care if some of it gets blended with uh, the green here, you see. So here we go. Everything but this square, remember? And we can actually go quite dark here. Neutralize it with a bit of the previous uh, mix, like so. And cover this all up. Now I know it may seem a little crazy. Trust me, it's going to work, okay? Now, I want to use a bit of Pyro Scarlet here. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You know, that's part of experimentation. Uh, so here we go, like this. And again, I'm avoiding this part that's going to be the lightest for now. I will address it in just a few moments, okay? Here we go. Now, here for the bottom section, I will go back with some yellow. Close it off. This yellow is pretty opaque, so you see it goes right over the pencil lines, and I'm fine with that. And now let's put in red through that, just through the yellow, you see? Here we go. Now, um, what we essentially got is kind of an underpainting with an area for highlight, and I know it doesn't look like much yet, but it will work, work itself out in a few moments. Now, this section, I think, is still a little wet, so I'm going to try, I'm going to do like the last time, 
spray some water on it and let's try adding yet darker values to it. Let's try making the most out of it. Okay, um, so I'm looking at my reference photo and the darkest section is up top. Now you notice I had to spray some water on it. It wasn't uh, wet enough just as is. And I know some people have the perfect climate for this. The paint stays moist for a long, long time. And that's great, but here that's not the case. It's actually quite dry very often, so you can't really rely on that. And you see, so I'm just placing in. Now let's add a bit of green there. Thick, very thick green. What I love about sap green right out, out of the box, so to speak, is that it can get quite dark. And, uh, and that's really useful. And now you see we get this smooth transition from light to dark. Now let's see where that transition occurs uh, on the left side. Sometimes you have to bring in a bit of water too. It loses its flow. So I brought some water as well. And we're gonna go over this section like that. And I think this is kind of where it lights up a bit. Now if you get too hard of an edge, again, you can go like this. And hopefully you see how it helps it move a bit, okay? Um, so this is pretty much it for the first wash. Again, I'm not gonna tr touch this square here because I don't want, um, you know, any of the green to blend into the red here. This is to be saved as a pretty clean area. Uh, so all we have to do now is let it dry a bit. I'm actually gonna leave it at a bit of an angle like this, you see? Uh, just so that the, it flows a little downwards, okay? So, I'm going to go over the chat, then I'm going to address some of the things I did here, why I did them, and hopefully it uh, makes sense to you. So, let's uh, see what we got here. Uh, some questions and uh, requests. So, uh, Scapoos, Joanne, Sodom Count, um, County. Um, M. Christine Landis says, hi from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, Marie Anderson says, hi Liron, been a while, looking forward to this, thank you. And by the way, I plan on doing a lot of more spontaneous live streams, just if, if I'm in the mood, uh, and I don't know, it's late, maybe I'm working on some stuff, um, artistic stuff, I want to have you join in with me, it can be fun, I think it's going to be something really interesting to do. Um, again, just for the fun, just for... Um, to share what I'm doing and not nothing. I may just not talk. I may just draw and and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy that. Just seeing what I'm working on. Uh, maybe I'll uh, raise my head <laughs> once in a while and uh, answer some questions. Um, John's watercolors. I answered that. Yes, I did have an article in Leisure Painter magazine. Um, I can actually show you via my phone in a few moments. Let's see. Uh, so Naminara Republic is in South Korea. I had no idea. Uh, thank you, Mark, for that. Uh, Lynn Manlo, good morning from Ontario. John's watercolors, thank you. Flower Child, I'm painting too. I'm almost in the middle of my painting. Uh, well, uh, I'll love to see it, so feel free to share it with me. The light's changing a bit, but uh, ha luckily I have this light here. Uh, Nir Pazhar, hello from Netanya, Israel. Um, I could immediately, of course, recognize by the name. Thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it. Uh, painting as well. A few year, a few days behind on washed over. That's fine. You know, just merge a couple of prompts together um, if you have to. I'm just gonna make it a little colder here. These live streams always bring up the body temperature. Um, so yeah, if you're a few days behind, don't worry about it too much. That's fine merge a couple of um, prompts together, do one painting with like five prompts, like an interesting thing, it, it can be done. Um, and it's all about, again, letting go of that. You know. uh, Cynthia Zick, good morning, Liron, from Madison. Um, WI, is that Wyoming? I'm not sure. Thank you for going live, this is fun. Uh, Donna Bowman, good morning. Um, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Have you tried uh, Daniel Smith Undersea Green? I actually have it here, and uh, if you you may notice some of it is here. So this is my Daniel Smith Undersea Green. It's a very nice color. Um, I also did, I believe, a Painting Masters episode on it. I just I'll bring a piece of paper and show you because it's really a nice color. It's very interesting too. It it has this interesting separation um, that it separates into the. Uh, yellow and blue components in a way. I don't know, it's just a really interesting green. And and I'm usually not that, uh, you know, I don't care as much about the specific colors I'm using, but uh, this is a nice one. And obviously I dropped some <laughs> paint here. Let's do this dab action. Uh, not too smart to do this uh, over the painting, but you know, that's fine. 
Uh, but in case, yeah, so this is undersea green. It's a really nice color, a bit of a neutralized kind of similar to sap green. Uh, I really like it. And it has this beautiful granulation effect that is really interesting. Um, Ronak Ahir, please make a video on how to make trees. I have a few of those, but I will make more. Uh, I haven't really done anything that really is specialized on trees. Uh, uh, and also love from India. Thank you, my friend. Annette Fournier, visual and audio are good. Thank you so much. Mary C, nice clear audio. Thank you. NZ007, sound and visual are good. Oh, cool. Um, hello from Quebec, Canada. Uh, art by Shilpam. Hi, Zeron. Uh, you're a big fan. Thank you so much. Uh, Kubra, may I ask if your green paints are granulative or is it because of your palette? Yeah, so I actually answered it um, without knowing. So, yes, yeah, some of this is going to granulate just because it has a bit of the granulating colors. Now, um, if I'm not mistaken, the only granulating color I have here is that undersea green. Sap green, if I'm not mistaken, does not granulate. Um, yellow ochre doesn't, th these reds don't. I don't have too many granulating colors. Um, nothing against them. For some reason, all the colors I like most in terms of what the color looks like aren't granulating. So that's just what happened. Um, so yeah, uh, and it looks natural anyway. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this is my goal usually with these. Uh, and that for me, our, our humidity varies right now. It's um, low, so fast drying is also a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. Uh, David Figs, how are you? Uh, I hope you're doing well. Kelvin Zero, first wash already so dark. Yep, yes, that's sometimes you have to push it. Um, but it's not too dark, I think. I think it's going to work fine. You have to remember that what some people do in glazes, I sometimes like to do in one go. So... What you see here is what it's going to be like till the end of the painting. That's the whole goal, to not touch this area again. Um, because if I have to touch it again, then I have to deal with sharp edges here and try to blend manually, which if you can avoid that, it's better. Video keeps cutting out, so I hope that's not a problem everyone experienced, but uh, yeah, it could be. Um, I'm actually going to test the playback afterwards because, again, the last two videos, the video did cut up. Uh, actually, in the live, I heard it was okay, but just the video afterwards on YouTube uh, did pose that issue. Uh, let's see. Um, Marjorie Johnson, New York, Upstate, uh, is losing its green at this time of year, but if I uh, hurry, I can follow this technique. But I think even when the green is lost, um, you start getting these really nice colors with the yellows and reds, the fall colors. I like them. Uh, my video is fine. Thank you so much, Annette. Joanne Langford, is it possible to keep the photo in view while you're painting? Hmm, you know what? Let's try it out. So I'm going to try it out. I'm mm, actually not sure how to do that. Let's see. Can I bring just a photo image at existing? Hmm. You know what? I'm going to try it out. We'll see if I can get it to work. I never did that before. Um, image. Okay, okay. So I think I'll, I can figure it out. Let's see. Uh, image. Okay. And now I'm going to browse. I'm going to find the image. Let's see. You know, it's good to be challenged live. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, this video will still be entertaining. Reference mailbox. Okay, yeah. So we got it all over the screen. Sorry about that. I'm going to make it smaller and hopefully uh, you'll be able to see. So, yep. Got to be prepared for these things, but I'm slowly learning how to use this software. So let me uh, let me know if now you can see it properly. It should show. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> I can see it. Okay, so it does show. Uh, just wondering what corner I should stick it. Uh, and let's see. Okay, so here's good. Um, yes, New York, uh, but you get beautiful co uh, color foliage. Indeed, John Watercolor, spontaneous. <laughs> Live sound great. We'll do Wisconsin. Okay, not Wyoming. My bad. Thank you, Mark, for the correction. Uh, South Carolina, USA. Glad I checked in. Love the live. Thank you so much, uh, Terry. Uh, Judy Savannah, uh, GA. So, GA, I don't know what that is. Um, you let me know. I don't know all the state's short, you know, uh, abbreviations. Leslie Khan, do you always uh, start painting with a value study? Um, not necessarily. I'll, I'll sometimes turn the photo you know, like black and white, but that's the maximum. Sometimes I will do a study for larger pieces that require more focus and things like that. I will. 
Um, Calvin Zero, you can get the same mix using Yellow Ochre and Ultramarine. Yep, similar enough, at least. Uh, Join says 6 a.m. here. Really wanted to see him join your live stream. Christine MD, good afternoon from Belgium. Thank you so much for joining, Christine. Uh, La w, hi from San Antonio, Texas, USA. I'm enjoying your live streams. I've been following you for years. I love the way you explain your process as you paint. Thanks for everything. Thank you. I really appreciate it, and I, I love your. I always love your profile pic. Like I, it always registers fast uh, in my mind. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. I'm happy I can explain. I think one of my uh, abilities is to explain things in a fairly simple way. By the way, sorry about this weird light. Uh, let's see if I can fix it. One moment. Yeah, so that's better. I don't know what that there. I have direct light from the window, which is why uh, that happened. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the chat in just a few moments. Uh, let's see what we have here. So essentially, we created a uh, a layer that has everything but the darks um, for the uh, mailbox. The background is fully taken care of. Now, the beautiful part about doing this kind of an initial wash is that now we actually have the freedom. So what we can do um, is decide what edges we want to show and what edges we want to keep blended. And that's the most important part in my opinion. So when I look at this, this edge right here um, will be maybe a little weaker, but as we move down here, we can get a nice dark, uh, strong contrast. And that'll be nice. And here we can go a little lighter because this is already fairly light. Um, so my plan for the next wash, and I think it's fully dry, I'm gonna mute myself and use a hair dryer a bit. And by the way, <laughs> for those who look for a quick, straightforward demo, my apologies, the live videos are not gonna be that. Um, but uh, yeah, this is why I do the videos and you can watch it double speed uh, at a later time. But in case, yeah, we're gonna get started on this, I think. I'm just gonna mute myself for a few moments, go over the chat, catch up, dry it, and then we'll continue. Okay, so uh, your ears should thank me that hair dryer is loud. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. We can work again on this part, darken it with the red, but I think we'll continue with the shadows for now. So let's do that. I'm going to switch to this brush. Now, if we, unless we use a very strong red, we will lose the redness here. Why? Because we already have some brown mixed into it, some green, some stuff like that. So I'll be very careful to include enough red. So I'm going to start, and this is how I like to often mix. I'll start with the color I want to be the strongest, the most dominant, and then I'll slowly add some more stuff into it. So I'll neutralize it a bit with this green over here. Okay. Now let's add a bit more water. We do want some flow, otherwise it's going to we're going to get a very patchy work there. So this is really a strong red. We can actually go with that, but let's just mute it a bit. Okay, maybe a bit of a bit of green, like neutralize it with the um, complementary color on the other side of the color wheel and we'll get started. So my goal is to go over this uh, left section here. And now I put a mark and then I look and see if it's uh, too dark or too light. You know, so you have to sometimes test these things out. This feels a little too dark almost. So I brought back some water. I'm just using that water to spread out the paint, okay? Now, uh, if you notice, I also lost a lot of the uh, pencil lines because they're just not as visible. Now, I have studied this reference for a while, so I, I'm familiar with it. Uh, you can go back and just re-add them if necessary. Also, I just look at the perspective. I drop this perspective line here that you can see like that, okay? And I'm just observing it and figuring out based on this corner where this corner should be, okay? Uh, and then we have this diagonal line coming through here. And now it's time to think about the edges. Do I want them to be a little more 
blend it in some parts or keep them as is. Now, I actually think that I like it this way. So let's keep it this way for this section. Um, and this is fairly easy. It's kind of like a coloring book in a way. Uh, I just have the area I want to fill in and I just fill it in. Um, now, here's the thing. So I recognize that this side is just a little bit lighter. So what I'm going to do is use more red of the Pyrrole Scarlet Red that is naturally a little lighter. And because it's facing more towards the light, it's perfect because you see the difference? This color is naturally a little lighter. So um, I don't know. I like that, that change here. Uh, now let's go over this shape a little carefully. And once we put the shape in, we can figure out what edges we want to you know get rid of here around this area so we have this at the back let's add a bit more dark red and, and maybe even more muted because this is a little bit more in the shadow you see and we're gonna go like that a little darker than i planned but it actually works out and now i can work on the shadow on the right i can just go like this not sh uh, shadow but rather shape Switching to a smaller brush and going kind of like this, you see, like that. Now, we're at a funny point here with the painting because what happens is this area feels really detached. It's just white. So we're going to fill it up in just a moment and you'll see how it looks a little better, okay? Because things can't fall into place fully until I put that part in. So I'm going to just mix here a very light but pure red it's going to be pyrrole scarlet so very strong and we'll see what we get here um i've had a couple of really nice days with the washtober challenge um i don't know how this one's going to turn out obviously but hopefully it will be at least satisfying enough so here we go now it's obviously much darker but i like to put something in and then just look at it for a while so we can add a bit more red to this and the Pyro Scarlet is a paint that is sometimes hard to control, so um, it can dry sometimes unevenly, in my experience, you know. Uh, so, so it's fine if you get some unevenness here and there. Uh, a lot of it actually is about learning about the particular paint you're using. Uh, and they do differ greatly. I don't think they differ enough so that it will, you know, ruin a painting or change things too much. But uh, there is a difference, so you do want to be aware of it. And with that, just I'm trying to avoid too many awkward white gaps, but even if there are, and this is the downside, obviously, of not painting uh, everything in the first wash, but even if they are, I'm fine with that. So I think we're going to let it dry for a while, just look at it, stir at it, and figure out what we want to add, what we want to remove. Uh, we'll add some details to give this the box its structure. Um, but overall, we're actually pretty close to done. I, I will consider adding some texture down below. We'll see. We'll go a little crazy here, I think. Um, some, some paintings just call for it. Uh, so let's see what we have here. And we have a bunch of people. Thank you so much for joining, everyone. 102 viewers. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, so let's go over some of the things here. We have a little W. Jessica Sanders, good morning from Texas. Annette Fournier, thanks, Calvin. I'll try that art by Shilpum. Can we use uh, colors from different brands together? For sure. So let me give you a brief overview of my palette here. So what I have here is Pile Scarlet from Daniel Smith. I have um, Yellow Ochre of M. Graham. Uh, I have um, this, this was, it kind of is still, but a bit of Thalo Blue by uh, White Knights, St. Petersburg. Same for this black, it's St. Petersburg. This is M. Graham. Um, and for many opaque colors, I'm using these Shinhan PWC colors. So another brand into the mix. Um, these are really nice. I'm going to show you these two mainly. Uh, this green pale is really, really good for traffic lights, you know, when they're bright green. That takes care of it. Uh, this is just good for any highlight, pretty much. Um, I also have this pen that a lot of people ask about, talking about highlights. Um, the Uniball Signo White Gel Pen. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me about this one over the last two years, I guess. The only issue with that, I can actually show it to you, is that sometimes it doesn't produce a very good line, you see? so. Sometimes doing this can help, you see. Uh, but it does sometimes uh, 
doesn't work as well. So for these um, instances where you need a larger, a longer line or something like that, I will use the opaque paint. Um, the, yeah, the straight out of the tube, but you can definitely mix brands. There's nothing wrong with that. Ariel Mayer, Myers, uh, glad to be here this morning. Would tune in to live. Thanks for all the work. Uh, it is fun to hear your process. Thank you. Uh, Nir Halpaz, the first person to pronounce my last name correctly. Well, obviously, I'm, uh, I, I speak fluent Hebrew. By the way, Hebrew accent, and you said you wanted to hear more, so Hebrew accent is really fascinating in a way. It's like, like we talked about it the last live session, that in English you have a lot of extra sounds, like for the O, you have a W and the O, but in Hebrew it's like O. Um, so if I were to speak English, but with a very Israeli accent, it would be so weird. So like, you would pronounce near, and sorry for making your name an example, but near Pazhar in English, but it's going to be near Pazhar in Hebrew. You see, it's much cleaner in a way. Uh, Kelvin Zero, weird, my yellow ochre granulates. Yeah, it depends on the brand. Not all yellow ochres are created equal. Uh, Mark Ohio, spell the name of the green, please. Um, so was it sap green or undersea green? I'm not sure. There's sap green, there's undersea green, uh, there's a bunch of greens. Um, I hope that helps. Uh, da -da -da -da. Uh, audio good. Ian, how are you, my friend? I hope you're doing great. Leslie, great. Calvin Zero, question. How do you know when your painting is good enough to be sold? Um, you know, it's very subjective. Uh, so you can see plenty of paintings that maybe you personally will not like or I won't like that are sold. So I would say that any painting can be sold. Um, I do think it's a matter of honesty on your part. Like if you want to go that route and be like fully like what I feel, it's it comes down to a personal feeling. If you think it's good, it's good. I think it's good enough to be sold. That's what I would say. Your standard will change with time. Obviously, things you thought in the past um, were good, you will start thinking aren't as good. Um, but that's for for the most part. I mean, sometimes it may not be the case. But um, I do think it's very subjective and personal. And I think if you feel good about it, then go ahead and and feel free to try and sell it. Um, and you can ask for other people's opinions, people that are close to you, that can really help, uh, but very, very subjective. It's, it's really hard to just say, uh, you know, and I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't say, um, by the way, Calvin, you have a Pokemon in your avatar, I just noticed it, that's, um, what's its name, Gardevoir, or uh, I forgot the name, uh, but one of my favorites, actually, uh, I don't remember, the Kirlia is the one before that, so, but I think that's a Gardevoir. 100% boring conversation for anyone who doesn't watch Pokemon. Uh, but yeah, that's my two cents about that. Um, Terry Carter, cool image, shows just now. Yeah, that's great. I was able to wing it. Uh, Joanne Langford, I also have been following you for years. Love the loose and uh, colorful portraits. Thank you. The portraits are, are the thing that I really enjoy painting in a way because you just have all sorts of shapes on the face and you can use you can treat them as very abstract shapes which is one of the things i like doing the most uh if i can go beyond what's actually there a nose a face a, you know whatever uh that's something i really really enjoy more than painting a lot of other things so um so yeah i i, I need to do more portraits just that the drawing stage of the portrait is a big challenge um so that's something to you know to work on and improve uh, for me personally, Judy is from oh Georgia, so G A is Georgia. I had a feeling, but I didn't want to guess and, and like end up being dumb. Uh, Sarah Simmert, good morning from Montana, USA. Uh, Barnsley, Republic of South Yorkshire. <laughs> it's funny. That's such an official name. Uh, Jen Watson, I'm from Montana as well. Uh, Calvin Zero, directed by J J Abrams. I I forgot what was, but I, I don't like him. Uh, I don't like his stuff as much. Um, Bozeman, how about da, 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 okay? That's a conversation, it's a conversation between the people in the chat, so I'm gonna skip that. Uh, Cynthia Zeke, uh, hello, Montana people. I love Montana, worked in Yellowstone two summers. Hmm. It's cool, okay? So I think we can continue. Let's see, we have a couple of questions. Sakul so Rai, does the value have to be accurate like Stan Miller does, like uh, leaving paper completely white for highlights, or as long as the difference between the values are the same? So that's a really good question. Values are 
uh, relative. So yes, you can play around with the actual values and change them up. I changed everything up in this painting. It just now turns more and more obvious to me. But also with the previous one, with the bird, uh, which I did for the instinct word, I changed, though the bird is a word, I changed quite a lot there as well. Um, I would say that you can change a lot. Uh, as long as the composition is interesting, the other fundamentals are on point, you will be able to change quite a lot and it will still look good. And a good uh, proof of that is Skip Lawrence's work. Um, if you look at uh, one of my recent videos, of, it's not really recent, it's like half a year ago, but uh, on, on me painting people, uh, you'll see that I have a video where I just use the temperature to create the contrast rather than the value and it works out quite nicely. Um, so I think it can definitely be done. You don't have to stick uh, directly to the you know to the colors you see to the values you see one more cool idea is to just uh, make the color schemes smaller the value scheme smaller so instead of using the darkest and the lightest you kind of minimize it and that can often lead to a hazy look foggy look which is nice um, so it really is a choice you have a lot of freedom in that I do think on a relative level yes I would like to see the darks a little darker the lights a little lighter okay I hope that makes sense. Um, da, 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 da. Doing a British mailbox later for my day 15. Cool. I'd love to see it. Uh, Ian, uh, Sarah Simard, nice. Uh, looking great. Do you consider creating a Twitch account? I have created a Twitch account, Kubra. I just didn't really enjoy it as much. I don't know why. The interface here is much better for me, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> there is like a Twitch drama every single day, right? That They have like, um, you know... Something happens there, they ban someone, or something happens, I don't know. Um, Indranil Biswas, hello Liron, hey, how are you? Uh, Leslie, thank you so much for the congrats for the 95 viewers. Uh, what brushes are you using? So for what you saw me using today is just the Skoda brushes. So I have this Barocco size 16, and I have this um, Perla size 8. Now, my only complaint with the Skoda brushes, it can be big to some people, but that's really my only complaint is, after a while, you see this is, um, which part was it? I don't remember, I think this. Um, after a while, I experienced a bit of movement here, um, and it was a bit annoying, um, but it stopped. I don't know, it depends on the brush. That's my only complaint. It's not a big deal. It doesn't happen with, they have these brushes that are just one piece, you know, because of the, uh, because this is a collapsible one, that you can fold like that. Uh, it's two pieces, obviously. Uh, but for the other ones, it never happened. So I don't know, it could be just a local issue. But other than that, they're really good. They're, they have crazy good tips. You can see here, you can get a lot done with these just large areas, small, accurate areas, everything works. Um, so yeah, but I also have um, Tracy Lebenson brushes that I use um, almost every day that I paint, I use one of them. Here's another one. This one I use more often, small one. Uh, these are really good. Um, and I will put links to everything in the description box, hopefully later. This is a Raphael brush that I really like. Uh, so yeah, some people I know don't want to hear the questions about tools and materials supplies. They just want the painting process. My apologies. It's a live video. It's the opportunity to do these things. Um, hmm. Jen says there's a bit of snow outside on the ground. That's really cool. I wish we get snow here. We don't ever get it. Uh, Marjorie Johnson, what I need to learn is start bald as you do. I tend to have a glaze multiple times to increase the intensity of colors. Don't worry about it, Marjorie, it's fine. Um, just try tackling it a few times, but even if you f you stay in that way, that's fine. If it works for you, don't worry about it. Um, I personally don't really like what's on paper right now, and this is a good live example for you to, s to see that it's okay. Uh, it's okay and we'll, um, we'll make it work, you'll see. Uh, we'll get it to work. Uh, really dig your style uh, and enjoy uh, the vids. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Javi Jav. Javi Jav? I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Lara Larson, hi from uh, Macedonia. I believe people from Macedonia say Macedonia. We say, in Hebrew, we say Macedonia. So let me know if that's the case. Uh, thank you for sharing your talent. Thank you so much. Now, let's see what we have here. I'm going to skip some chats uh, because there's a lot. Uh, oh, the light came on. <laughs> Toda. Uh, let's see. Hearing Hebrew is like. What's that? 
Uh, May has to go and Ruth will, is going to chase her now to the door and then she'll come back when she realizes she can do nothing about it. <laughs> um, hearing Hebrew is like being back home for me. We had a large Hebrew population. Everyone just mingled together. Hmm. It's funny, yeah. What? Bye. Let's see if I can get her. Bye. Nah, she doesn't want to go. <laughs> Maybe later. Oops, sorry. Move the camera. Sorry about that. Here we go. Um... So let's talk a bit about the plan for the next stages, okay? Um, so here's what I'm going to do. And by the way, thank you so much. There's quite a lot of people here, 107, 103 people I see. Thank you so, so much for joining. I really appreciate it. So you can now compare um, the, the reference photo and the actual thing right here. Here's what I see, okay? And, and this is assuming we do want to stick to the reference in some way. So if you compare this section, yes, it is, you know what, it's a little lighter. So we can go with another thin glaze over this part. Another thing we should do is create the details within the shadows here, just to bring out the shape and some, some of the, the actual parts of this left side. And then if we choose to, we can work on the background a bit more, which I'm hesitant to do. Now, what do I do when I have these... Um, forks in the road of what do I want to work on next, I just go with what is easiest for me in a way. The easiest thing for me is to take care of this left section. So let's start with that. I'm going to grab a small brush. Let's use this one, Tracy's. These are great brushes. Um, and I'm going to start and try and establish a few details on the left side. As you can tell, I'm always running low on paint and I'm always too slow to refill it. So my apologies about that. Um, it's not as good for demos, but for me on a on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't really care about it. Uh, it doesn't interrupt me as much. But here we go. So uh, this is fairly simple because it's just putting in the lines. Now, if you can't see them, I'm going to show you with a pencil. There is line go one line going like this. Um, this comes out like that. Then we have this nice little curvy line. It follows the same perspective as this. Okay, these two corners. And by the way, I haven't talked about the drawing stage. I will say a word or two, I think, when we're done. Um, and then we have this thing that opens up, okay? Like so. So these are the things we have to go over. And luckily, because the uh, pencil is shiny, <laughs> it is a bit shiny, so you can uh, see it with the light. Now, I don't want it to be too strong, so let's see what we get here. That's good. Now, I'm just going to start dropping in some lines. So... This is a good first one. I love this brush for long straight lines. It's really good for that. It gives you really good control, really neat control. You can check out Tracy's website. Uh, this one is a small, soft, white synthetic uh, brush. Now let's get this slightly curvy line right around here, like so. And, and again, this is going to be fairly fast, and there's nothing to it really. It's like drawing in a way. Um, and this is where you can really relax. You know, I lo I know a lot of people paint. They they feel this pressure to do things fast so that nothing dries on them, and that's fine. But uh, I really like this stage where you can relax. And ultimately, I want these streams to be that kind of relaxing for you to listen to, and for me as well. Um, I don't want to be too stressed about the result. Um, in fact, one thing I'm not stressed about is multitasking with the chat. That's something I really enjoy. Uh, so feel free to, you know, send whatever questions you want. I'll try going over everything. Um, obviously, I may not be able to, but uh, at the very least, I want to hear your thoughts. And, and I love that that element of juggling between the two. So don't worry about that. Um, okay, so we got the, this section done. Now you see how it got a bit of a more shape to it, a little bit more of a feeling of solidness. Um, there is this point here. Sometimes it's hard to verbalize exactly what I'm doing, but uh, there is a shadow to the right here. Um, kind of loose, that's fine. Um, we have another line here. It's fairly weak, but I'm going to put it anyway. And I think this is pretty much it in terms of establishing the shape of this part. Now, let's do a very thin glaze over this. It's a bit of a risk, honestly. It is quite close. You know what, let's do this. I know what we do. What I actually see is a transition from uh, light to dark. So let's, I just feel like I do want to go over it one more time. So I'm gonna put in some water, you see? 
just like that. And then into this water, I'm going to start adding some, uh, a mix that actually has some paint in it, you see, like so. And the goal here is to just darken it very gently, very, very gently, okay? See, now it gets a little closer to what it should be. Now, if I'm uncertain, I'm just going to go back, uh, put I put a brush in some water, wiped some of it clean, and I'm just going to add that in. And I did a, a video on that. I think I linked it up a few times before. Um, what I show is how you can control the value real time. So if something is too, uh, too dark, you just come back with a dry brush and you can pick some of it back up. If something is too uh, light, you come back and you inject more uh, paint into it. And that's a really good way to control the value you have on paper. So we're almost done. Now the only thing is, well, two things actually. Do we want to mess uh, around with the background and do we want to maybe add some kind of a logo or something like that? I will ponder these very important questions as I move over to the chat and answer some of your questions. <laughs> and again, uh, it's not going to be like a straightforward fast tutorial because that's, that's the part of the fun of the live video. So I'm going to actually take the iPad in my hand and let's see what we have here. Um, so yeah, and I, you could see it, but I don't think it really matters. So you can see me in like, it's a um, inception of live streams. For a moment, I'm like, should I show the screen? Is there anything private there? But no, nothing. Uh, so yeah, let's see what we have here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. What do you think about Azerbaijan versus Armenia War ZS? I'm sorry to say I don't know much about it, um, so I don't have an opinion, unfortunately. Sorry. Uh, Leslie, uh, repeat the name of the green you love from Shinhan. Paint, please. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll write it down for you. Um, so I think it's called Pale Green or Green Pale. Green Pale. Here it is. You can see it, hopefully. And I'm going to write it down. Green Pale. It's 586, it seems. That's like the catalog number right here. So I hope that helps. Um, sorry that I see the chat in delay. It takes me some time to get to your questions. My apologies. Bruce uh, Gamberling, I enjoy mixing incline work with watercolor. Are you planning to do anything like that for Washtober 2020? Um, not for now. I'm not planning to, but it may happen. It's fun. I love uh, ink and wash as well, um, and I do it sometimes. So yeah, uh, I may I may do that. I may decide spontaneously. It's something that is very uh, great fun sometimes. Like every painting I do live, I get this red stain here from my hand. I just don't know what it is about the live videos. Uh, Kelvin Zero, yes, Gardevoir, shiny Gardevoir, and Mega Evolution. I actually caught a, sh a shiny Ralts a few days ago. Um, I evolved it into a Kirlia, so now I have a shiny Kirlia. And again, one of my favorite Pokemon, Gar Gardevoir. So hopefully um, I will be able to evolve it to that. John's Watercolors, Iran, may I ask what studio chair you have? I'm looking for one myself, and uh, yours looks really comfortable and supportive. Thank you. So here's the thing. The previous chair I had, uh, actually May's mom uh, just brought it over and I took it. I, I, I've I never went out and purchased a chair. Now this one, funny enough, which is very comfortable. So you know with the COVID and everything, people are in the lockdown, and people threw out so many things just put them in the street, like things that are completely new, you'd be amazed. So we have a rooftop on the building, a really nice one actually. We found a, an awesome table, like a large table, just to have people over. So we brought it up. We just picked it up from the street and put it there. Same goes for this chair. I just found it and it was in perfect condition. And it's really nice. It's, it's the first time I have a, a chair that actually gets all the way up to the neck. And I love it. It's so nice, you know, I can just chill, lean back. Relax. I'm gonna have a, ch a chat. Um, let's see, you know. Well, I don't paint. Let's make my face a little bigger. I have a pretty big nose, unfortunately, but uh, at least now you get to see more of me. So let me know if that's good. Uh, let's see. Uh, it really pops forward. Thank you. I think you refer to the painting, and I am happy to hear. I like my avatar so much that I have it framed in my room. That's really cool. Uh, Fenka, hello. ZS, I like how you talk from your nose. Uh, that's adorable. What do you mean talk from my nose? I don't really talk from my nose. Um, you know, I used to have a lot of um, uh, nose issues. Like I have a deviated septum, so that's fun. Uh, but I actually got surgery to fix it. 
um, and now it's much, much better. Uh, I do think the audio quality maybe lacks a bit because it's this this potato camera's microphone, so I don't know. Kimberly Hilton Studio, hello and good morning from Kentucky, USA. Good morning to you, Kimberly. Uh, Terry, I love the birds, uh, very individual style. Uh, oh yeah, the bird that I did then, yeah, it was really good. Jack Tackeros, Twitch is toxic as hell, don't. Yeah, I know, I don't, I don't. It's not important enough, I have you here, I don't need to go to Twitch, maybe in the future. Raimundo Corona, um, today's prompt was a bit hard on me, I had a hard time with perspective. So far I've enjoyed my watched over experience. Yeah, as soon as you start doing like things that were human made, like these mailboxes, it's just, you need to know perspective and it, it can be a bit challenging. By the way, 127 people, thank you so, so much. I really am happy to have you here. And by the way, let me ask you now while I have you here, um, do you want me to do like a live that is just a chat? And it doesn't have, it can be in addition, so you're not losing a, an actual lesson. I can do three vids, one of them is live with a process and an extra one. Do you want to do one that's more like just conversational? You want me to talk about a specific topic? Um, you want me to do just live Q&A? Let me know if you have any questions like this. I'll collect them maybe if they're larger, bigger, take more time to address. I'll be happy to do something like that. Um, so yeah. Uh, Anna R. Gal uh, Gallardo, greetings from Mexico. Thank you so much. By the way, Anna, I have to tell you a fun story. Uh, someone actually emailed me from Mexico that uh, they bought my book. I have uh, my How to Sketchbook is translated to Spanish, Como Dibujar, and it's available in Mexico and Spain and other uh, countries, Spanish speaking mostly. I don't believe it's available in the US, um, but someone just emailed me out of the blue in Spanish. My Spanish is lacking, so I used Google Translate. They just bought my book from the, the window of a bookstore and and uh, he, he it's, I think it was a, uh, a man and he asked if he can uh, send me like a, a drawing for a review or something. And it was so cool because I think this person has no idea that I'm not a native Spanish speaker. Just the book was translated by a publishing house. Uh, so it's really nice to hear and I, it's always fun to hear someone actually purchase the book. Uh, get the personal email. I really appreciate it. And I know a lot of you have sent me emails like this, so thank you. Um, John Watercolor, love the large painting that you did nailed on the wall. How was the experience for you? Steep angle, etc. Yeah, so um, let me see if I can actually show you. I'll just drag a picture here, another one. Sorry if it's a bit of a messy stream, um, but hopefully you'll still enjoy it. I'm going to add an image. I'm going to go OK. Um, and I think I should, you know what, let me just show you on my phone maybe. I'll just show you on my phone, I think. It's much faster. Um, oh, but then you won't be able to see the details. You know what? Hold on a second. I'll, I'll, I'll show you. I did a huge painting. I actually nailed it to the wall on our rooftop. I'm going to bring it up in a moment and you'll see. So I'm just going to airdrop it to my Mac. Um, and then I'm just going to browse for it. Then I'm going to go to uh, the downloads folder. And I think... Okay, yeah, here we go. So... Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Fill up the entire screen, obviously. Uh, here we go. So sorry, <laughs> but the screen is messy. But here I am, and this is actually my biggest painting so far. I had to nail it to the wall, uh, as I mentioned. You can see it, hopefully. It's just huge. Uh, this is about uh, 80 on 120 centimeters. I hope that makes sense. Um, and yeah, I had a really good time uh, making it. This was painted based on a picture I took uh, in New York. I loved it. It's a very hazy picture. Now, because it's such a big piece, I struggled with it quite a bit. Um, it was a big challenge. And uh, the technique, you can see some of the washes are uneven. Some of the colors aren't as I imagined them. You can see a lot of... Um, drips of water because I used very wet paint. By the way, let me show you the brush I used. I think I have it here handy. This is a pretty big uh, Raphael brush. You can see it here. It's pretty big uh, Raphael soft aqua. It's called. I bought this one in Paris. Um, and yeah, it was just uh, really useful, but it was still hard. Like imagine this thing next to this painting that you see right here. It's just 
it wasn't even enough and I had to you know I had to take a tip from um, I forgot his name another artist that paints huge and just makes like a bucket with paint straight out of the tube in advance that's the only way really to tackle these properly I think but still I love the result I think I did a decent job on it um, it was a hard experience yeah the steep angle was very challenging uh, Kubra says in Turkish we also say Macedonia interesting yeah so Turkish, I know I don't know much about uh, Turkish. I only know Çok Güzel. I think that's how you say it. Uh, single player. Hello, sir. Hello to you. Annette Fournier. Thank you so much, Liron. You're helping me to be brave. I tend to be tentative when I have to darken everything up. Yeah, don't worry about it. You just have to be brave a few times with your paintings. Just go for it a few times, and you'll get the hang of it. Joanne Langford. Uh, someone said something in Korean. Sorry, I can't read Korean. Um, can I translate it though? No. Uh, Joanne, thank you for showing the reference photo. It helps to understand why in the painting. It actually helps me as well because I can see it right next to the painting on the screen. Uh, Marco Ohio, the roof uh, looks like it is slightly darker on the right. Hmm. Yeah, it is. Around the right, bottom right, I think. Uh, let's see. Any other video games you play, Liron? YM asks. I actually don't play much at the moment. Um, I, I do have a Switch, a Nintendo Switch. Uh, one of my favorites there was obviously Breath of the Wild. Uh, I'm more of a Nintendo guy because I never really had video games as much like the classic video games growing up. Um, so I only had like the, um, uh, Nintendo stuff and I all, obviously I love manga and I love all that kind of thing. So I love the Pokemon manga actually, I'm reading now. Um, I did play, when I was young, I played all of the, like, the Pokemon Yellow and Gold and Silver on the Game Boy Color. What else am I playing? I played Mafia 1 and 2, I believe, like a year ago. I don't play much video games. I wish I played more. One game I really liked um, on the Switch was Octopath Traveler, which maybe you've heard of it. Um, just really good. It's an RPG, but it's very beginner level RPG. It's not too complex, so it was good for me. I do want to try Xenoblade Chronicles. Uh, that's a good one, too. Chris North asks, so that's <laughs> about video games. I hope uh, maybe to play more in the near future. Um, because I do enjoy them. I just always feel guilty and then I end up not playing for too long. Um, one game I couldn't really connect with was The Witcher 3. I haven't played 1 and 2, so I just couldn't really get it. I don't know why. Um, what's the name of the two-piece brush? So the two-piece brush, it's, um, it's a Skoda Barocco, size 16 which you can see here, I think, a little better. Here we go. And the thing is, this is the Plan Air from their Plan Air set. So it's collapsible. It comes in this beautiful thing. So you can see it here. And there are three of these. And you do this. Oops. Yeah, now I have to be careful about the hair so I don't destroy the brush. That way I just wet it and put it here carefully. And it just goes in here like that, and you get the brush <laughs> and all of them. It's just easy to carry that way. Really good brushes. Um, so here we go. Um, how can you take something from street? What if somebody died on that chair? Well, uh, I don't think that happened. To be honest with you, I don't think anyone sat on this chair uh, at all. But yeah, the table. Hopefully, nobody died on. So, yeah, that's bleak. John's watercolor. Thank Liron. Thanks, Liron. If you find another chair, let me know. Yeah, I'll, I'll mail it to you. Uh, near Harpaz, then the chair will be haunted. Yeah, you know. So talking about haunted stuff, and I hope you're not like we're gonna go back to the painting soon. I promise. But um, let's get rid of this one. Uh, yes, I want to remove image too. Um, I just uh, we just finished watching uh, Haunting of the of Hill House, um, the the TV series. It was really unnerving i think that's the right word uh, so don't talk to me about haunted stuff right now i don't need it oops sorry moved everything my bad there we go live bloopers on the stream i just want to make myself a little smaller so you can see the painting more i will go back to painting soon uh, let's see what else do we have here what do you think of Jake Parker's October plagiarizing Alfonso Dunn's book? Uh, so yeah, this is something interesting. First, I will preface this by saying that there is no way of knowing truly what happened there. Uh, if I'm honest with you, who knows? Like, a lot of these books are based on the same principles and then it may appear like something was plagiarized when in fact it wasn't. It's just the same influence on two artists. 
So that's one thing. Now another thing I would say is I watched the video and like 20 or 30 minutes in I was like mm, I don't see it. Like okay it's similar concepts but then around the 30 or 20 minute mark I don't remember something like that it became really similar. Like the, the methodology of teaching became really similar. So that's something I don't like as much. And I think even if it was uh, copied, you could change the names of stuff, be more original, you know. So I don't know. It's just it's just very close. Um, but I don't know what to say. I, I went back and checked, uh, looked into my books to think that could this could someone think this was plagiarized? But my method, I grew up in such an like artistically in such an insular manner that it's not similar to anything else. It's really my methods are really different so uh, and it's a bit of a different book too I didn't talk about pen sketching in in, in particular um, so yeah it's just uh, I, I just it's I'm, I feel bad for Alfonso because he's I love his videos I love Jake Parker's videos too and hopefully he wasn't plagiarized but if he was it sucks you know ZS I have trouble with uh, protect the white uh, will using masking fluid uh, bad for improving do you use it um, so I think it's just learn both ways learn to paint with masking tape fluid without it see what works for you and try to not be too dependent on anything uh, just be able to do what you want on your own that's basically the point so let's go real quick into this paint into this uh, background we'll see what we can do uh, I'm going to darken some spots, maybe we end up regretting it, maybe we don't, but I'd much rather try something and uh, not regret not trying it, you know. Um, so we're going to go for it. Even though I said I don't want to touch it, we're going to go revisit this section uh, at the top. I'm going to try and see if I can do something with it that makes sense. Um, let's see, let's go for it. I'm going to start with the point that I feel like is the darkest and should be the darkest, which is around here so here we go see I said it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be at its at its darkest well I lied uh, we're going a little darker now uh, but not for everything just for this section I feel like it will tie everything a little better this way now I'm gonna switch to some sap green sappy green why is it sappy and we're going to connect these two. And notice how I'm going lighter here. It looks a little dark maybe, but it is much, much lighter. And then I can kind of cut it off like that. Uh, but actually, I don't want this soft edge. So let's let's go over this like that. Uh, I don't want this hard edge. So I'm going to go like this. Soften it up. Grab a piece of toilet paper and just go like this. And here we go. So that's that. Now the right side, uh, I'll add a bit more of that. Uh, sap green. I'm actually missing a bit of blue in this painting, which makes sense because I kind of ran out of it, so I didn't use much. Um, that's fine. Sometimes I feel like if I don't use all three primary colors, something's missing, but that's fine. Now, here we have an opportunity to put in some harsh edges, so, and I actually like that, so let's, let's do something like this. You see here? Um, actually, let's dig a little deeper on the middle, like that. I like that think that works well. Um, what do I want to add here? Honestly, I think we're done. I think we're really done. Um, hmm. Highlight on top. I don't think that's necessary. You know what? I really like it as it is. So let's do this. I'm going to draw something here, like a some kind of a pattern or something like this. Now, here's a good opportunity to talk about drawing and perspective. Because we have something really interesting here. Um, we have this plane. And it goes something like, let me bring an extra piece of paper for you. Because this is a rather quick painting, let's do some added value here. Uh, let's move this away. So here. When you look at this, um, you have the roof, obviously. So that goes like this. But this thing under it, it's actually a wall or like a, you know, a rectangle it goes like this okay you see I just separated the two basically and then the front goes something like this okay like this so if I want to put a circular shape in here I run into a challenge because how shall how should the oval look like this like this like this like there's an endless ways of doing it so one trick for you is to 
sketch a square. And obviously, if it's not a perfect square, that's fine. It's not going to be perfect. But then try and kind of trap a circle within it, okay? So here I am trapping a circle within it, kind of like that. And that's how you can get uh, your circle. Now, another method, so if this is the wall, I'm going to try and do this analysis and we'll see if I can get it, okay? This is pretty challenging for me too, but the front that meets it goes like this, right? So the line that is perpendicular to this surface goes like this, like this. So that's the, you see? That line is perpendicular to this surface. Again, if I have this surface, this is the line that's perpendicular to it. You see? It's a bit diagonal. It's this line. Now what do we do? To get the, the circle to look good, we're going to drop a line that's perpendicular to that, like so. And that's going to be the long axis of our ellipse. And that's how you check these things out. So let me do this. We're going to put an ellipse here. See? And that's how you put the ellipse cleanly in perspective. Now, if we trap it within a square, and by the way, I hope that doesn't bore you to, uh, to hear all of this. But you see? That's how you calculate these things. I'm going to do one more quickly because, I don't know, I enjoy these. And that's how you calculate these things. So let's say we have a surface here that we're looking uh, on it's like a square and it moves away from us so the line that is um, perpendicular to this surface actually goes like this you see and then the line that's perpendicular to that is this and then we can do this as the long axis of the um, oval that represents actually a circle in perspective okay I hope that makes sense I actually have a video on the topic but in any case so this is how we're gonna put uh, it here Okay, the reason I said it was because we do have this beautiful circular pattern. So the line that is perpendicular, and if that's that's the center about here, and that's the line that's perpendicular, long axis of the oval goes like this, and then we can put it in. You see? And hopefully that makes sense. Now we can draw it. Now it's interesting. Let me let's try something fun here. Okay, I'm gonna try something I don't usually do. Um, and let's see, just want to catch up with the chat, make sure nothing's strange. Okay, so this is how I want to try it out. And I want to show you something I don't show you very often. Okay, are you with me? Um, what I want to show you is, I'm going to grab some opaque paint. We're going to mix opaque paint to use here, but I'm not going to use it straight out of the tube. I'm actually going to mix it with some paints. And I want to show you how you can use opaque paint if you want to get a subtle like a, like in a sign, sometimes the lettering is white or it's lighter than the background uh, of the of the. <sighs> forgot the word. <laughs> I just said it and I forgot it. Uh, sign, yeah. So if you have a sign and you want to get um, you want to get lighter lettering, this is how you would do it. Let me move everything so you can actually see. So here I am. Here's my palette. Let's do it like this. I'm going to move the camera. Sorry if we get a little dizzy here. Okay. So I'm going to grab some of this white opaque paint and I'm going to mix it on my palette. So here we go. Like this. You see? Now, normally I would take it out of the tube and just use it and get the white highlight I want. But you can actually dilute it with some water and paint. Now, I do want this to be blue. So I'm adding a bit of blue. What we get here is actually a partially opaque blue. Let me show you. You see? Because we mix this white with the blue. Now, the more white we're going to mix, the lighter and whiter it's going to get, obviously. So let me show you. See? And let's compare it to what we have here. See how it got lighter? So you can actually mix opaque paint and use it like watercolor. So let's do it. Let's put in a bit of more blue here. And that's if you want the lettering and the logo and whatever is on it to be lighter than the red, okay? And that's a good substitute for using like a white pen or something like this. Now, the tricky part is controlling it because I'm not that experienced in it, but let's see what we get. So this looks a little too 
light, but don't let it mislead you. It actually may dry much uh, light, much darker. But let's let's just get rid of some paint here. Let's see. So this looks a little too strong for me. I'm gonna add some water, or maybe even add some of the sepia mix here, and we'll darken it a bit. Okay. And it's funny, it's really, it really gets a little more similar to working with um, even oils or acrylics, you see here. Now, when it once it dries, you'll see that it dries lighter, uh, darker, sorry. I'm used to saying lighter, uh, but here we go. See, so let's get this here. Let's see what happens. Worst case, we can paint over it. We can always darken. Um, and I'm actually, let's go with what I see. You know what, why not? So this goes like that, here. And I love, this is why I love these challenges. You can experiment with new things. Now, if it's too light, you just dab some of it out, you see? Or you can just glaze on top of it. I believe it's gonna dry a little uh, darker, so we're gonna be fine. And there's this star here. I hope that's not like a bad sign or something, but bad symbol. Uh, but yeah, so here we go and you see how it this part especially dried a little lighter and you get this nice little writing there So if it feels branded in a way or like it means something so that's a fun way of doing it Now one more thing I would consider doing is not leaving this section empty, but you know what? I'm gonna have to observe it a bit Let's let it rest for a bit um, hmm. What do I want to add here? Let's try something in addition to that. We're, we're going to do like an experimentation day here. So I'm going to add uh, the tape here just for a bit of a, a bit of a, an angle, a very small angle, like 10 to 15 degrees, not much. Um, it's amazing that everyone's still on. Thank you so much. 117 uh, viewers together. I really appreciate it. So thank you for tuning in. So here's what we're going to do. I'm actually going to spray. Let's spray some water here. Just a bit, see? And I'm gonna dab some green into it because this area feels a bit empty and you can even go like this and spray some, see? Just feels a little too empty for me. Uh, so let's do this. And I actually like the way it looks with the red here. So that's a nice little added bonus. And it just gives it some, you know, something to look at in the foreground that it's currently very empty. So here we go. Same for the other side, just for Unity's sake. So here we go. Oh, by the way, Assassin's Creed. I loved Assassin's Creed. I played that a lot uh, in the past. Uh, I loved 3 the most for some reason. Here we go. So I think this looks a little better, if you ask me. But remember, this whole challenge, the goal is to just paint every single day. You don't have to be a perfectionistic. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay to paint something that's mediocre and below. You should be perfectly fine with that. In fact, every day I paint stuff is, that are mediocre and below, and I'm fine with that. Um, you don't have to share, by the way, if you don't like your results. I don't care, but you don't have to share everything you create, obviously. You don't have to share any of it. Okay, so I'm running out of water here. Here we go. Uh, so we're going to let this stay for a while. I'm going to answer some of the questions. Uh, let's see what we got here. And I think with that, after the questions, we can wrap it up. Uh, but let's see what uh, you are saying in the chat. I'm going to lean back and just address the questions. <laughs> so let's see. Um, oh, by the way, I know you may not be able to hear me as well because the mic is on the camera. Hopefully you can still hear me well, even when I lean back. Chair is haunted, we don't like that. Uh, plagiarism, protecting the white. Massive house, cleaning and gardening during lockdown here too. Cynthia Zick. Yeah, it's a strange time. Everyone's cleaning, throwing stuff out. Uh, Raimundo Corona. Uh, it is available in Amazon in the US. I bought it in Spanish. Yeah, yeah, in Amazon it is. But I'm talking brick and mortar. But thank you so much for getting it. Um, in Spanish, no less. Thank you so much, uh, Raimundo. Um, it is. The question is, I'm not sure. I don't think in stores it is. Um, the real Andre B. L. Pérez. Do you know the YouTube artist Schaefer? Schaefer art. He draws too. I I know the name for sure. I'm not sure who it is and if I watch their videos, but I know the name for sure. It probably popped up in my recommendations multiple times. Joan Langfeld, uh, uh, Langfeld. Sorry, I'm mispronouncing your name. I saw your book in Spanish in our library, Northern. California you have wow I had no idea 
Thank you for letting me know. I didn't know. I knew it got to some libraries. Like, what, what do they call it? Scholastics, I think. But wow, thank you so much for letting me know. Uh, Annette Fournier, when I lived in Connecticut... And by the way, it's so funny how when, when you uh, delegate your product to someone else, as in this example, you know, I delegated my book creation in Spanish to someone else, you really have no idea what's going on with it. You don't know, like, I, I don't know the, the exact distribution. It's just a thing that's a bit of a mystery. Um, it's so funny to think about it. Um, when, you know, my courses, I can answer every question you'll have about them and how to buy them and how to use them and every bug that anyone has ever encountered, you know, problems with videos or, uh, like every problem, I'm familiar with everything, like not being able to log in, all these stuff, obviously, because it's my product, it's 100% in my control. Um, I would say the same for my Amazon books, because the books on Amazon are fully under my control, but once you give it to a publishing house, um, you just have no idea what's, what's happening with it, you know. It's just funny to think about it. Um, so yeah, Annette Fournier, when I lived in Connecticut, I could take discarded like new items off the street, but Pennsylvania has a bed bug, uh, bed bug problem, so no, uh, no more of that thrifty behavior. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, we actually don't have that big of a like bed bug or, you know, these things. Uh, I don't know if there's, there are multiple types. We don't have that problem here, but I would never like pick up a mattress. Uh, that's, that's no way. Uh, but tables are fine and, and we clean them, so, you know. Um, what paper uh, is it, Nir Harpaz asks, um, do you refer to the large painting, I guess? It's, a, it's an arch, pa arch paper. Um, I bought this huge roll of paper, like nine yards, eight meters, I think, uh, and I just rolled it out, cut it out, a uh, large piece, and, and used that, yeah. Uh, do you watch Art Attack with Neil Buchanan? I have heard the name Neil Buchanan, but no, sorry, real Andre B. Um, I watch a lot of stuff. Let's see what we're, we'll get to something in a moment. Jen Watson, this is excellent. Thank you, Cynthia Zeke. I like the way you're uh, doing paint and chat. Thank you so much. I will continue doing it this way. Uh, Jackie Megan, do you uh, mean you painted it nail to the wall? Hello from Tennessee. Yes, and hopefully the picture showed you, Jackie. Um, it is. Uh, it was nailed to the wall like fully. I, I just nailed a bunch of nails there, and I had to find the right spots to nail them because some parts of the wall were too strong for that. Um, uh, but yeah, they, they didn't even leave a mark on the, the wall. is so strong. I think the nail just got jammed between in its texture. Um, but yeah, I used a lot of them, and and I was sure it's gonna pop out at some point, but it didn't. So good for me. It was a good process. Uh, Ian, it took me, by the way, like all day long I painted like half of the first half of the day I was just spending painting outside because it took a lot of effort to plan things out and to you know uh, do all these uh, it's just a lot of effort sorry I moved the phone from the frame I don't know what's gonna pop there right now I don't want it to uh, be on the live uh, let's see Do -do -do -do. Ian Jackson, have to go at, uh, at sticking paper to stretched canvas with double-sided sticky tape. Yeah, that's an interesting. Uh, I should try it out. Um, I, I have considered doing something like this, like actually um, nailing it with, a, you know, these, what do you call it, like nail gun. Um, I should try something like this. Uh, Leslie, we have a few items from the street. The best was a beautiful working grandfather clock that we loved very much. Wow, these things also worth uh, a lot of money, I believe. Um, Don Watercolors, you did an awesome job. Thank you so much. Foddy, uh, that's Russian, I believe, so I can't read it. Sorry about that. Uh, Donna Bullman, I love the painting. Thank you, Donna. Annette Fournier, great find on the clock. Yeah, it is. Wow. Um, Kubra, your paintings are chocolate <laughs> indeed. Thank you. Um, we, you know, the there are quite a lot of um, Turkish shows here in Israel that really made it and a lot of people watch. A lot of people that I know love them, so um, I think Turkish is becoming like, for my generation, what Spanish was, because we used to watch uh, Chiquititas, that was really popular, like, uh, you know, I don't know what they're called in English, but like the the whole Argentinian telenovelas were really popular uh, in my day, uh, so I think now Turkish is going to be the same. Uh, I actually met quite a lot of people from Turkey, very nice, uh, very nice people. Uh, here in Israel and also in my travels. Uh, Join Langfeld, uh, nice large painting. Thank you, Mark. I noticed the materials are listed below the video. Yeah, I always list the materials. To be honest with you, I'm a little lazy in updating them, so I may change some things up and I haven't updated there. So just let me know in a comment. I'll try to 
uh, address any particular questions. By the way, look at this. I think it dried really nicely. You see, it's lighter than the uh, red, but it's still quite dark. So that's it's a very interesting method of working. You see how milky it gets when you use the opaque color with just paint? It works for some reason. Um, Cosmo Queen. I wanted to see the second season, but the first one did me in. Uh, you're talking about Haunting of Hill House. I actually read that the second season isn't as good, so we decided to just stop. Um, so I don't know how many of you watched Stranger Things. Uh, we just caught up with it now, so we're a little late. Um, I really loved the first season, and I thought the second season was good, and I thought the third season was really bad. Um, which is why uh, we decided to just stop after this uh, season. We're not going to take <laughs> these risks anymore. It's just, if it's perfect, it ended on a perfect note, in my opinion. Some people didn't like the last two episodes, from what I uh, understand. But I don't know, I really loved it all the way to the end. So, because we binge watched it, so I don't know. I remember, uh, John says, I remember these green earphones and your green outfit from the video Secret Rooftop, where you also painted your trainers green. <laughs> Thank you so much, John. You're a true fan. Yeah, this is one of my favorite videos, actually. I really enjoyed it. And I don't know if you uh, followed me on Instagram back then, but my stories for that day were also green themed. Um, mm. It was really fun making these videos outside. I should probably go back to it. I really enjoy doing these. Uh, it's just hard to do sometimes, and it takes a lot of you know thought and planning, but, but I do like to do them, so yeah. Um, now that I look at this, by the way, I went a little too dark uh, on the reds here in the shadows. I'm fine with that. I think the impression would have improved a bit if we just have gone a little too light. If I just gone a little too light. Um, Leslie, how do you approach painting lettering on objects in your reference photo? So you just saw now like a symbol. Uh, it isn't always easy. It's definitely a challenge. You have to be careful. You have to learn the perspective. Um, maybe add some guidelines to get the lettering right. It is a challenge, but hopefully this helped. Um, Prent TV, hi, I'm a painter too. What did you use? Watercolor? Yes, thank you for joining the stream. I have used watercolor. Welcome aboard. Um, Terry, I like a live chat with uh, watching you paint. Don't like chat, only can listen to podcasts. Yeah, exactly. So my goal is at some point to have these live streams also part of them, kind of like a podcast that you can just listen to. So maybe not uh, exclusively, maybe try a mix of both. I will, I will try. What paper did you use? How many GSM? This is 300 GSM. It's a sketchbook that uh, was sent to me by um, um, Michael Soloviev. Let me show you. Uh, he's a really good artist and he's a Daniel Smith ambassador and he sent me this one and it's really really cool. Uh, he's a, a Russian, originally from Russia, but he lives in Canada if I'm not mistaken. It's really robust, it's very strong paper. Uh, you can see here 100% cotton, cold pressed, 300 GSM. I've been really enjoying this and, and I think I love the, I really love the paintings I produced so far. Let me show you by the way, because I can show you. Like this one I like a lot. Uh, this one for persistence, day 13 of the washed over challenge. Uh, this one I also love, uh, smell for day 14 yesterday. Coffee beans, so I don't know, that's nice. Um, I will show you more in the future because I've, I already did a video on it and I already showed you in the last live stream. Um, let's see, Doo -doo -doo -doo. losing volume. Uh, does that mean you can't hear me as well? Sorry, uh, let's see. Ian Jackson says, as a sign writer, I have to stop my uh, so myself going into sign writing mode and painting every letter. So most of my letters I do in abstract way. Way to go for being able to, to be aware of that and actually not go into that mode. Uh, I know it's a challenge. Uh, sometimes if you're good at something, you want to do more and more of that, you know. Um, Annette Fournier, oh my gosh, I don't think I could paint if I ran out of blue. Uh, any other color, okay, but not blue. It's my favorite. I get it. And I agree. But one thing you can do is just paint monochromatically, like this one I just showed you. Just go with perfect red. Just very strong red, uh, as you can see. This is a quinacridone rose. Um, well, not quinacridone rose. It has a bit of a different name. Uh, but by it's the same. It's essentially the same by uh, M. Graham. Really good paint. Uh, Marie Labrec, this is so helpful, I have the same uh, sketchbook, but still working up the courage to tackle the blank pages, this inspires me, go for it, just go for it, you know, destroy the sketchbook with really paintings you consider bad, it shouldn't matter, just fill it up and, um, and practice, practice. 
Kimberly Hilton Studio. Wow, thank you for explaining that. You got it. I'm happy it helped. Uh, solving the circular issue, genius. Yeah, I learned that from Proko. He's a genius. Um, perspective, like advanced perspective, is fascinating. There's so much to learn. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go over the rest of the chat. Then we're going to um, do a wrap up and wrap it up. Thank you so much. So many people, 112 viewers. I really appreciate it. Um, John has to go, so, so so sorry, my friend, I have to go now. Thank you for, so much for answering my questions and for your support and encouragement. Take care and speak to you soon. Thank you, John, and I'm sorry that I know I have a bunch of messages to answer. I will get to them hopefully soon. Sorry about that. Um, Joanne, I love that perpendicular line. Great explanation. Happy I could help. Annette Fournier, I'm on the third page of my sketchbook because I just finished one and it's the only uh, other I have. <laughs> it's precious to me. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I like to save some art materials that I like, not waste them quote-unquote, uh, using both sides of paper. I also do, as you can see, and I love it. Um, ZS, thanks for sharing your experience. Greeting from Istanbul. Take care. Thank you. Uh, Marjorie Johnson, don't know what happened, but I can hardly hear you. Sorry, Marjorie. Oh, good. Now you can hear me. Okay. And uh, now I'm, I'm relaxed. Even the watercolors. Uh, hey -oh, what's up, host of our bodies? Uh, Susan Brady, hello from Utah, USA. Mark, I mentioned an email to you about spraying alcohol uh, in wet wash to give some texture and break up flat areas. I think I saw your email. Uh, I hope to reply to all emails uh, in a consolidated manner soon. I know I have a bunch of them to answer. Uh, I tried to send an email. Maybe if you were to write your address, uh, I'm on tablet, not computer. want to send you stuff when I uh, break up house. Um, so yeah, the email, I'm going to write it down. Um, Liron. At, and you can find it on my channel as well, Liron Ian. That's the email. Dot com, obviously. Uh, so you can feel free to send me an email there. Um, da -da -da -da. To Marjorie, I tried to send an email. I read that. Daiji Shinomori, my friend, how are you? You're late. Uh, welcome aboard. The real Andre B. Do you know Shu Rainer? I know Shu Rainer. Watched quite a lot of his videos. Uh, really enjoyed them. Uh, he has good topics. Really interesting. Uh, Marjorie can take 90% of my watercolor stuff. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Kimberly Hilton. How does white watercolor compare to white gouache? Um, honestly, I don't know. I haven't used gouache much. Um, I hope to do that in the future. Maybe I'll realize. It's a good question. How does watercolor differ from gouache? I just know that gouache is used thicker. Maybe it's... Um, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I guess something in the... Uh, how it's constructed is a little different and meant to be less uh, blended with water. Uh, so, yeah. Um, thank you, Marjorie. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm so happy I can inspire in any way. Uh, okay. Uh, Diraj Saini. Hello, sir. How are you? Thank you for joining. Uh, I love the Raptor Live and painted that. I've painted a lot of your tutorials. Thank you so much, Joanne. Uh, near, hey Kimberly, you notice know, artists actually use white gouache, da, 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 real Andre. Do you do abstract painting or drawing? I actually tried a few abstract paintings. Uh, it was fun. It was great fun. Uh, I may do more in the future. It was more abstract pattern-like, so I did a pattern of 3D cubes. Um, it was really, really fun. Try watercolor and colored pencils together. I will. Interesting. Um, I, I have tried a few times, but not enough like to get a good grasp on the technique. Also, um, uh, watercolor pencils is something I know nothing about and I really want to try out more of. Uh, where should we post our versions? So you can post, uh, Judy, um, you can post to Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, tag me or send me a message or send me an email. I won't be able to see everything unfortunately, but I do try to see as many as I can and share a lot too. Um, so thank you for that. Thank you for sending them to me. Um, Leslie, uh, thanks, loved, uh, loved it, great pointer. See you next week. We'll see you next week. Uh, Annette, gouache has less gum Arabic, so it's opaque. Mm, makes sense. And I would assume that maybe it has less ingredients that have to do with mixing with water. I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea. Um, it's just watercolor, pen, and ink for me at the moment, and I've been really enjoying it. You will see many more pen and ink works soon. By the way, sorry if the volume is a little higher. I got closer to uh, the camera. Um, but in case, now we're going to wrap it up. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Uh, this process is, again, it's just a part of the uh, Washtober Challenge. It's not nothing perfect. I don't know what I think about it, to be quite honest with you. Maybe I like it. Maybe I don't. Maybe it lacks in some ways. I don't care. But it's all about doing it every single day painting the smell 
prompt and the persistent prompt and this one I liked and you haven't seen probably the um, day 12 cars I showed it in, a, in the YouTube video but just as a quick picture um, this one communication uh, sorry I don't think you could see it very well now you can see it now you can see it you know, it's all about doing it every single day like this face that I don't like as much you know that's how it is sometimes you'll get the result you want sometimes you want just keep at it keep painting keep creating and uh, keep me updated on how it goes the feedback helps a lot so seeing your messages and seeing your comments is very useful to me um, and uh, I do try again to answer as many as I can, but even if I don't just know that it really means a lot because I use that feedback, I, I can't, like I can't say how many times I did get a question, maybe didn't get time to address it, but then I went ahead and made a video on it. So the person got their answer hopefully, uh, but even if they didn't get like a uh, direct um, message from me, they still got the answer. So hopefully I can do that and it gets a little hard uh, when you get a large amount. Now, uh, one last question. I see Mark Ohio asks, how did you get the texture in the communication? Uh, it's just, I did one even wash and then I did, um, let's see, something's weird here. Yeah, I did one even wash top to bottom, a little gradual from dark to light. And then it's just a bunch of lines, uh, a bunch of dry brush lines, so a lot of that. Uh, I got the nice dry brush effect. Actually, let me show you maybe here. You'll see it better. I think you'll see it a little better. You see, I just got this uh, with dry brush, white opaque paint, and it really helped, I think, the, the impression and having this feeling of texture. Um, let's see if there's anything else before uh, we wrap it up. Marjorie, way to go for donating uh, to schools and homeschool art classes. That's great. I don't know coin. I don't know how to pronounce it. Sorry. Um, dry brush indeed. Uh, I think washes poster and tempera paint. Interesting. So hopefully, when I try gouache in the future, I will explore more of it. I have tried a bit of um, acrylics in the past, uh, and I liked it. You can actually see it behind me. There's a study. Maybe I'll share it in some other time properly uh, of an artist I really, really like uh, of their acrylics work. Um, and yeah, I just try to paint whatever I love and, uh, and share it with you. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to wrap it up now. Take care. Uh, I, I'm just not that experienced in ending live videos. I'm really on it with the YouTube videos, uh, but, but we're just going to have to <laughs> wrap it up. So thank you so much. Once again, I really, really do appreciate you being here. I want to do many more of these lives. Some may be more spontaneous, some more uh, even quicker ones to just show you what I'm working on, pop in, pop out. Um, so let me know your thoughts on that. And if you're watching this stream after it ended, just know I really appreciate that as well. And let me know in the comment down below if you watch it after the fact. I'm curious to know. So thank you so much. And I will talk to you again. We'll see you again in another live real soon.